mkutano wa kibiashara unaowahusisha wawekezaji kutoka katika bara la Afrika na nchi ya Uingereza. Nchi takribani moja kutokea katika bara la Afrika zilishiriki katika mkutano huu mkubwa uliofanyika nchini Uingereza katika jiji la London. Wageni hao moja kutoka katika bara la Afrika waliokwenda nchini Uingereza walipokelewa na kukaribishwa na mwenyeji wao ndugu Boris Johnson waziri mkuu wa Uingereza. Lakini hata hivyo bwana Boris Johnson alisikika akisema huu ni mwanzo mpya kati ya nchi yake na mataifa ya Afrika kwa ujumla. Lakini pia alizungumzia miaka yake miwili ya yeye kuwa waziri mkuu wa Uingereza na kuwa alitembelea mataifa mengi ya Afrika kuliko ilivyo kawaida. Na huku akiyataja kwa majina kama mfano Kenya, Uganda, Ghana, Ethiopia na mengine mengi aliyataja. Hakuachilia mbali kuzungumzia masuala ya idara ya uhamiaji jinsi ambavyo itakavyoweza kutoa huduma kwa wageni na wenyeji sawa kama ambavyo inavyotakiwa kufanyika hasa kwa kulinda masuala ya kibiashara kama ambavyo China wanafanya. Basi mimi nisikumalizie uhondo ni kukaribishia wewe mtazamaji wetu kuweza kuangalia kile ambacho Dr. Jo- Boris Johnson alichokuwa akizungumza. Heads of state heads of government, business leaders, friends, good morning to you all and a very warm welcome to London, to the UK and to a new start in our business partnership between my country and your countries and indeed the whole continent of Africa. I am reliably informed that this is the very first time that the UK and quite so many African nations have come together for an event of this kind. And when we celebrate all sorts of exciting new beginnings, start of a new year, a new decade, new government here in Britain, it is an event whose time has come and indeed an event that is long overdue. An event that I regard as the climax of considerable personal exertions. Because during my two years as Foreign Secretary, I visited more African nations than any other senior British politician in living memory. Ghana, the Gambia, Libya, Liberia, Uganda, Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire, Somalia, Kenya, Egypt, Ethiopia, where in a fit of brilliance, our excellent ambassador decided that I should challenge Haile Gibra Selassie to a running race <laughs> in Addis Ababa at an altitude of 2,355 meters in fierce sunshine over a distance of about a mile. And I had to pretend to have a heart attack (laughs) in order to get him to slow down. And what everybody said was a very convincing impersonation of a man having a heart attack. And wherever I went in Africa, I found a lot of interest. I'm proud to say a lot of affection for the UK, even a lot of love. But I also realized that we in the UK have a vital job in continuing to convince people across the continent that we're not just a great friend and ally, a reliable ally, but also the people you should be doing business with. We have no divine right to that business. This is a competitive world. You have many suitors. Some of you may be off shortly to sample the delights of Davos, but look today at what we have to offer. Look around the world today and you will swiftly see that the UK is not only the obvious part, partner of choice, we're also very much the partner of today, of tomorrow and decades to come. Because the truth is that in 2020, the UK is the ultimate one-stop shop for the ambitious, growing international economy. If you want investment in a new project or enterprise, Just hop on the tube, one stop from here, and you'll be in the heart of Canary Wharf, where, along with its older sibling in the city of London, trillions of pounds of capital are being raised for every venture you can think of, from French construction to African telecoms to American cancer-curing drugs. In every currency that you've heard of, and some that have only been recently invented, it may give you some idea of the scale of the financial services in London when I say that Canary Wharf alone is a bigger banking centre than the whole of Frankfurt. We have the tech. We have edtech, midtech, fintech, 
biotech, green tech, nanotech, tech of all kinds. We have by far the biggest tech sector anywhere in this hemisphere, two or three times bigger than any of our, our rivals. And that works in synergy, of course, with our amazing higher education sector. We have more of the world's top universities than any other country outside the United States. Every year, thanks to our Achieving and Commonwealth scholarships, their doors are opened to the best and brightest students from every part of Africa. And I'm proud to say today that one in seven of the world's kings, queens, presidents, prime ministers were educated in this country, including the Japanese emperor. We have a total global monopoly on the higher education of emperors. And <laughs> thank you for that. It's true. And if you, if you want to come here to study in, the, in those universities, if you want to play a part in the high-tech revolution, if you want to work with the titans of our financial world, then you'll be pleased to hear, my friends, that one thing is changing, our immigration system. I know it's an issue that people have raised with me in the past, but change is coming, and our system is becoming fairer and more equal as between all our global friends and partners treating people the same wherever they come from. And by putting people before passports, we will be able to attract the best talent from around the world, wherever they may be. Because I appreciate, as I say, that there is no shortage of governments out there touting for your business. China, I must mention the competition, but I'm, I better, I mean, why not? China, Russia, Germany, I'm told there's going to be a conference in France uh, fairly soon. But in the words of an old Akan proverb that I picked up in Ghana, all fingers are not the same. Basi mimi ni Simon Mzwanda. Ni kuombe wewe ndugu yangu usubscribe na kuwasambazia wengine pale unapona inafaa. Tukutane tena wakati mwingine. Asante sana.